What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And today, we're taking a look over here at the Bitcoin price chart and the altcoin market. We have a green day over here in crypto. You can see on the right side of the screen, literally everything is green. I know we always appreciate those days. Of course, we're looking for more than this, but you know what? We'll take them when we can get them. If you caught yesterday's video twice, you may have noticed that I had to re-upload the video. I'm not really sure what happened with that. It seemed like it wasn't showing up in people's subscription feeds and notifications didn't go out. I edited the video slightly, maybe removed some things that could have been the problem issues. It seems to work now. Sorry for all the confusion with that. But one of the main topics we talked about there in that video is what's going on with Bitcoin and how it's at a really confusing time period right now on whether or not it's going to pull back a little bit lower or if it's going to go ahead and start the retrace. My general idea, my general thought process for Bitcoin is that, you know what, it's going into a retrace, but these things can be ugly, they can be sloppy. And I showed all the different ways that those can play out and how they have played out. Something you all should be familiar with at this point has been the inverted or inverse price chart of Bitcoin and we've compared this thing multiple times and I thought we could just take a look at it one more time to see where we're at currently right now for Bitcoin. Then we'll start talking about the altcoin market because there's some interesting things over there. But even when we look at this from the inverse perspective or the inverted perspective on what these things normally look like and how we knew to stay strong during May, June, and July because it's normal for these price levels to hold in here, what we know is that these things can actually tease a little bit down in here before the reversal ends up happening. Again, so if you're confused by what's happening here on the top side of the screen, we've inverted Bitcoin and we can zoom out on it. And this is the Bitcoin everybody is familiar with, but we can flip it upside down to have a non-biased view of what's happening in here and what reversal structures typically look like. And we've gone into detail on this many, many times. If you're new here, sorry about that. I'll probably try to touch on a couple other charts here in a second. But essentially when these levels hold and then after the top gets in or the reversal point gets put in, you can see how sloppy it can get back up in here. And we can see kind of a double bottom with a, a newer price level gets hit over here. And this is Bitcoin from back in 2018. And that we haven't had that happen in here yet, right? So it's real hard to sit there and say, hey, you know, we're not going to do it and we're totally reversing right now. And we've started the retrace when that hasn't appeared yet. I introduced this to my YouTube channel over a year ago at this point, particularly when we were talking about XRP. It's where I kind of introduced all the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wave count stuff. But even in here, right, you can see there was an an another attempt to go back down there or to go back to that level, which for Bitcoin would look something along the lines of heading back up here. So in these two examples that we have here where this structure plays out, it's happened in both of them. So hopefully you can kind of understand my hesitation on why it's like, yeah, I mean, maybe we've started the retrace, but it's real hard to like commit to it and say it absolutely has started. Because one thing I've been real committal to has been this whole structure, right? The grand perspective of the whole structure. And I do know that in these scenarios, it's very common to go back a second time. And even over here on the gold to silver ratio, which we also talked about, I believe, last week, it's like this moment in time right here being, you know, like, like we're hanging out in here. And you could see it as well. It went back one more time, which looking over here on the right side of the screen, as price moves up on this chart, the price of Bitcoin is actually moving down, right? Move it back off of that inverted scale and you get kind of an idea of what it's looking like. So question comes into play of whether or not, you know, hey, are we in a moment like this right in here for Bitcoin where it's just paused out right here? It's going to go back and revisit it one more time. Or are we in a moment that's more so like this, right? There's still another pop that's going to happen for Bitcoin. This will complete an A wave for Bitcoin. So A, then long-term B, and then really long-term C heading way down here. Flip it back. Gives you kind of an idea, right? And that's kind of been, you know, my grander perspective of what's happening with Bitcoin is that it's going to be a very long drawn out retracement that comes in here for Bitcoin. But the question still remains right now with the price of where it is at this exact moment, has it begun the ABC correction or ABC retracement at this time? And so it's still a waiting game on there. But I wanted to show you exactly why it's so difficult to be completely decisive on whether or not it is or isn't at this point. But what does it all say in here still? Even if it's just right here and it's going to head back in there, it's still pointing to all of this, right? It's still pointing to a big retracement is still coming in here. And we know in 2018, that's the optimistic time for the altcoin market. And that's what I'm really here for at this point. It's been a great run with Bitcoin. Now, you guys know we've had the YouTube channel since, you know, 
2019 here through all the, you know, C19 sell off stuff, Bitcoin, $6,000, expecting a $70,000 Bitcoin price. We got to it. Boom. It was an awesome run. It was phenomenal. But the show stopping event that we've seen at the end of all cryptocurrency bull runs is with the altcoin market. So that is where my focus is attentive to right now. But I do know we need to get this thing going into a retracement before that gets rocking and rolling. So still waiting for a decisive answer from Bitcoin. But you can see from a time perspective, it's really close. And if you just kind of freehand drew what it would look like, right? And then we'll flip it all back upside down or back the appropriate way so you can get an idea of what this looks like, right? Here we go. We're heading on down, 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 down. This is our retrace. And then boom, that's the end of it. Put us back on just like that. Flip her upside down. And there you have it, right? And these are the things that we keep talking about with an A, B, C correction. And for the altcoin market, my personal perspective on it, when I draw out all scenarios of how a retracement can play out, this is the most optimistic one for an altcoin big mega run because we have seen this one before. If we say that we are doing something more along the lines of, hey, this reversal is looking exactly like what the last reversal looked like. So here, I'll put us in a smaller time frame. We talked about this yesterday. What if? flip it upside down what if our reversal is coming in very similar to what our last one did right so you can see these similarities in here you see these bottoms you see these pullbacks and then now we are here in the slop range right things are a little bit different right there's not a ton of time for the altcoins to really go crazy in here, unlike if we had more of the drawn out scenario. So things would have to happen pretty fast in the altcoin market. It's not to say that they can't. We'll show examples of how usually they are pretty quick. Um, I don't think anybody's going to complain if you know we're having full-blown rapid alt season here by March and April. I don't think anybody's going to complain about that. Uh, but things would have to start getting moving pretty soon. Same goes for what the fractal has looked like for the last five months. We would essentially have to see, uh, you know, a dip and then an alt season show up and wrap itself up by mid-March. Both of those scenarios both show a time scale of late March, early April. Now, we'll start talking about altcoin market here in just a moment, but recognize both of these things that say, hey, go into March or going to April is where the retracement wraps up for Bitcoin. Um, in both those circumstances, we don't see a new low get set in here. But in the longer example of a longer ABC correction coming in here, there is still a dip down in Bitcoin. And then this thing gets drawn out for a very long time. Um, very long time is, you know, in the eye of the beholder. But based on what we've seen, looks like maybe about a year for an entire retracement to happen for Bitcoin. So choose which one you would prefer, but the market will decide for us. And we're just waiting for that answer to show up. Heading back to the inverted scale, um, if you had to ask me personally, which one am I cheering for? Which one would I want to play out? Well, I like markets to be easy to read. <laughs> I like to have a very clear picture on crypto. I like to have a, very, have a very clear picture on Bitcoin. And for things to remain consistent, for things to be clear, um, I would still have a very easy read on this market if Bitcoin did pull back into these price levels and then began its ABC correction. So part of me does actually cheer that the structure just remains consistent. We get a dip. It will have short-term pain. People will not be happy about that. You know, flip that back to standard scale. It would look like that, right? People would not be happy about that in the moment but the structure would still remain incredibly clear. And I'm all about having a very clear read on the market. So if I had to choose any of the scenarios to root for, I would root for the one that gives me the easiest read. So that gives me the easiest read. It's super optimistic for the altcoin market, makes it very clear for the altcoin market based on what we saw happen in 2018. But I do recognize by saying that, it means there's a short-term moment of pain. So while hoping for that blueprint, we know this one still exists in here and this one's pretty easy to read as well so this is still in play it's still easy to read i always suspect things won't follow these things forever and if it does deviate and change i'm hoping it changes to one that i'm familiar with but until then waiting game but the question comes what about those altcoins right what if this thing does just start retracing and it's going into late march we'll just set the date like just we're gonna randomly pick a date and don't be sitting here saying blockchain backers said this date let's just say march 25th right let's just guess that's the date 
that's based on absolutely nothing. I based that on fairy tales and magic unicorn dust. But let's just say March 25th, right? How many days does that give us from today? That would give us 40 days to do some type of big bull run in crypto. And can things like this go firing off into new all-time highs in a matter of four days? We've got Ethereum Classic here on the screen, right? Question is, you know, is this an ABC correction that is now completed for Ethereum Classic on a major scale with a one, two, three, four, five for A, A, B, C for B with a a one, two, three, four, five for C. So if that's wrapped up, ready to head into a new bull run, can it do it in a matter of 40 days? And we can check and see, well, let's see how, how fast it took for this last bull run to play out in here. Does this get us some type of move like this, get us there by March 25th, right? Um, you can see that right there takes you to March 9th. That's how fast these things play out, right? Move it over here and how fast... Even if it just started from right in here, where does that get you? March 28th. Um, so we see that the bull runs in assets like this do won't do them that fast. And in this example, Ethereum Classic rose up, you know, 1,500% in a matter of 40 days. When XRP had its big end of cycle bull run, the one that fired it all the way down from right here at 19.9 cents, all the way up to, you know, $3.30. This lasted a total of 27 days to rise 1,500%. And that was the end of cycle bull run, right? And this thing was just sad and pathetic the whole time until suddenly 27 days later, up 1,572. Even looking at things like SHIB, which was very popular last year, you could see it sat down here in this accumulation rate for 138 days. So four and a half months of sitting down here in this price level, and then suddenly breaks out and gets going and rises up over a thousand percent in a matter of 29 days. So bull runs and altcoins have a tendency to move at this type of velocity. The end of cycle bull run for Cardano back in 2017, 2018 rose a total of 1,658% in a matter of 28 days as well. And so, you know, topping out January 5th into the retracement on Bitcoin when its retracement was done. And once again, for Cardano, that was 28 days. And we can even look at stuff like, hey, Stellar Lumens from back in 2017, rising a matter of 2,200% in 40 days. So this is kind of how the end of cycles runs have happened happened in the past is that they go chaotic in 25 to 40 days. Then you kind of look at things like Ethereum Classic and you say, man, well, how, how much is it down since it peaked at that point, right? Right now, Ethereum Classic's down like 87% at this point from it peaking after that, you know, I don't remember what the number was, 25 to 40 day run up that it had right in there. But is it in any way normal to see that after a first peak, you know, you pause ABC in here, step down and then just start firing up. And that's precisely what happened for Ethereum Classic back here at this time period when it also peaked back there in May in 2017, then had its final push. And we can measure this one too that took it off into a new all-time high for Ethereum Classic. That one, 49 days is the whole run, right? So you spend seven months in here and then 49 days goes sets a new all-time high, then goes off into a super prolonged bear market. At the same time, ABC down in here. But 88%, man, that's a big number. Is there any way that that thing can recover itself 87% and go off into a new all-time high? Are there any examples of where that's occurred? Which, of course, we've referenced back to the SIA coin price chart. I believe it did it two weeks ago. Also did it in the live stream last Friday is that we saw that SIA coin multiple times fell over 85% in here as part of just corrections in a bull run. Here's an 87% like we saw in Ethereum Classic. And then goes on to set new all-time highs, right? You know, everybody's drawn into Doge and what has happened to Doge as it's pulled like an XRP 2017 style bull run here for Doge. But let's go back to 2017 for Doge and what happened in here. What happened? Fall, ABC, fall. And how big was the fall that took place here for Doge? 84%. Recovers, goes on and sets a new all-time high, then goes off into the bear market. And then once this thing really broke up and got going, right, how long was the actual bull run in here? Well, it was 46 days, rising over a 1,000%, right? So that's typical for how these endings happen. And like we see multiple examples of these 80% plus pull, pull downs is just part of the volatility that we unfortunately or fortunately have to deal with in crypto as we can see that our bull runs are multi-thousand percent rises. And when we get these multi-thousand percent rises, 
in such short amount of times. And really, if we can look and see where did this breakout actually start, it started right there. It was 56 days for that first bull run for Doge. So everybody loves Doge, right? But we can go through the history of how much time does Doge actually spend in bull runs. And these are the only time periods that it actually spends in bull runs. Right in here, um, every other time period, such as all of this and all of this, and all of this is bear market. So all the green you see is bear market. And the only bull market Stoge has had is in these short time periods. But can we ever pull down 87% with this style of move here happening? And then it go on and set new highs. And we're showing multiple examples of that and multiple examples where the percentage drawdown is there over 80% before it ends up recovering. And after this move ends up happening, where is this? You know, this is at the end of the cycle. Litecoin's end of cycle bull run over 600% in a matter of 35 days. IOTA, over 1,500% in a matter of 31 days. And even the most recent insanity of Elon coin up 5,000% in a matter of 29 days. So what's the point of all of this? It's to say, one, it's not crazy to see these types of drawdowns while still in a bull market for the altcoin market, as we see these things happen all the time which even occurred in Dogecoin prior to the final run up back at the end of the retracement and for Siacoin two separate times. But to also say it's not impossible for that to happen if this thing continues to play out in here and if this thing runs up here by late March that it starts wrapping over and then that's the tipping point. Is that how many days away is that? It's about 35 to 40 days. And as we saw in all the examples, that's usually the range of how many days it takes for those alt seasons to happen, 25 to 40 days. So there's still time, uh, but we got to see things break out really quickly if that's the case. And if we're more so doing something like this, well, there's still time. It still gets you out there till late March, really, maybe early April. That's still enough time. Again, things would have to break out pretty soon. So it's not impossible for these things to happen because we just measured the time perspectives of all of all of those, right? And all of them happened in 25 to 40 days. So it's not unrealistic for it to happen. Uh, it's just got to start pretty soon. But if we do see what we talked about earlier in the video, and we see a pull back and then it comes out in here and we're just ABC correcting in here. This buys a significant amount more time. Put that back on standard scale so we can see it in a normal format. Is that this buys a incredible amount more time and there doesn't become such an emergency for it to happen very soon. It gives a more opportunity for a kind of a healthier grind to the upside rather than having to be so straight lined up. Because what happens, what do we see in all the examples when the straight line up goes up? It becomes a game of hot potato at the end. Who can get out? Because if you don't get out, what's going to happen? It's going to crash afterwards. So something like this does give an opportunity for a more of a healthier grind to the upside. Otherwise... <laughs> If either of those other two fractals play out, we got like 40 days. Now, again, I'm operating under the belief that we're in a bear market, right? So I don't entertain the idea of new all-time highs for Bitcoin. And that, you know, that stems from a couple of different things. One, of course, being that the Bitcoin market cap has hit the 4.236 extension, unable to close above it, and has taken a large rejection off of that. Now showing bearish divergences on the strength indicators and along with Bitcoin actually playing out this fractal right in here. This is not a fractal that has occurred in a bull market for Bitcoin. These fractals and these drawdowns in this manner are the type that occur in bear markets for Bitcoin. So there's no examples of this ever happening in a bull market for Bitcoin. There's only examples of it happening in a bear market for Bitcoin, which inevitably led to a retrace, which is like what we see on here. And this eventually led to even further downward price action for Bitcoin. So mix along the fact that it's hit the 4.236 extension and it's even doing bear market fractals in here. Um, I don't entertain the idea of a new all-time high for Bitcoin. I totally operate under the idea of retracements for Bitcoin uh, because we can see in this example, this is actually pulled from back here in 2018's bear market. That's from this time period right in here. And we can see retracement and then full-blown capitulation for Bitcoin did eventually come later. Um, so, you know, everything that I say, all my thoughts that I go through, I stick with a true format. I don't entertain the idea of a new all-time high. Will I get proven wrong? We'll all find out in the future. But when I formulate all of my ideas and my assessments of what I think is happening, not financial advice, I'm a YouTuber, my ideas of what I think is happening in the market, I stick strictly to the idea that Bitcoin is in a bear market. What happens in bear markets? Typically, top will come in, big initial falls will happen, 
And like we saw back in 2018 for Bitcoin into the retracement here is where the altcoin market pumped into new all time highs. And so that's what I'm looking for to happen here in Bitcoin, waiting for this retracement to come in in here and to see the altcoin market do something similar to what it did back in 2018. And while Bitcoin's market cap has hit this 4.236 extension and Ethereum's market cap has hit this 4.236 extension, I go into it with a biased approach for both of them that they're both doing the same thing and that we know the remainder of the market total three the altcoin market excluding bitcoin and excluding ethereum has yet to have that opportunity to reach those great heights with a ton of these altcoins still lagging behind so a lot of this move up in here has been very isolated to specific coins but the majority of the market has not gone as we can see represented here on this chart is that at the end of each cycles we have these periods where everything moves up together everything moves up together everything moves up together and even in 2021, this market still behaves in that same manner where they all move up together. Yet here we are at the top and we've yet to have this moment here, the big question mark, why is the whole market not moved up together? And the best guess I can make is based on what has happened in the past is that as we went into retracements, the altcoin market was able to continue pushing up higher. We have not moved into that retracement yet for Bitcoin. And that's the thing I'm looking for. So. While I do cheer for a clear picture of an ABC forming here over here on Bitcoin, I did want to show you if either of these things play out where if this thing still just continues to go and this is what our retracement looks like and it wraps up here at the end of March, history shows those altcoin explosions for end of cycles last 25 to 40 days and that's just about how much time we've got. So not impossible, but exactly how it has happened before. But all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope that you enjoyed it. Got to see things kind of from a different angle, a different perspective a little bit there and how long these alt seasons have lasted in the past. So I hope you enjoyed seeing that. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for something to do, you can check out my website over here. It's bcbacker.com. Uh, this is a course that I put together. It's where I deep dive into the previous Bitcoin bull runs, the previous altcoin market cycles, tying them all together to show how this cryptocurrency market has worked in the past, structure a lot like my YouTube channel. It's me talking with charts. It's not PowerPoint presentations. I tried to make it very similar to YouTube with easy to understand concepts and ideas. Um, I talk about my personal exit plans in here and I teach you how to set up your own charts and your own indicators within TradingView and CoinTrader Pro so you can do your own charting. I talk a lot about mathematics and percentages in here and why they're so important to me. And the most recent market update in there is there on January 31st. And you can check out all of this educational content over here on bcbacker.com. You can follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. And I want to thank you so much for watching my channel. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.